such an enriching experience that affords you an unforgettable encounter with God and His Word. The Vibrant General Superintendent of the Ministry, Pastor W.F. Kumuyi, is a renowned minister and teacher of the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, having traveled worldwide for the propagation of the Gospel. Each contact with his ministration gives you the privilege of joining our thirsty and expectant congregation to receive the bread of life, which satisfies the body, soul, and spirit through anointed messages filled with unction of the Holy Ghost. This message will transform you and help to deepen your walk with God and your service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sit back as we present to you the unchanging Word of God through His minister, whose entire life revolves around the preaching of the gospel of salvation and purity of life in preparation for life here and hereafter. Let's welcome Pastor W.F. Kumui. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our gathering together tonight. Thank you, Lord, because you make us to be the fulfillment of that word. Unto him, unto Christ, shall the gathering of the people be. And Lord, we pray as we gather around the table of the Lord tonight, wanting to eat the bread of life and drink the water of life, we pray you'll feed us and satisfy every soul in Jesus' name. And the power that comes of the world, a regenerating power, a purifying power, a sanctifying power, oh Lord, we pray you grant to us in Jesus' name. And the empowerment, the enablement of the Spirit will also be evident in us as we take in your word. And then this word will work powerfully, effectually in our hearts in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to see the things you want us to see. That we, Lord, in the strength and power of your Spirit, will stand firm, steadfast, unmovable, unshakable, standing on the rock that is higher than us. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we come to Daniel chapter 5. And it's wonderful as we look at the beginning of this chapter. And everything we read here, everything we notice here will bring an important lesson to us. We just finished studying chapter 4. And in chapter 4 we met Nebuchadnezzar. And now we're coming to chapter 5 and we're meeting this man, Belshazzar. What a tragedy. What a terrible thing. That as we have studied Nebuchadnezzar, and eventually he learned about God. He knew that God is the living God, number one. Number two, he learned that God is the most high God. Number three, he learned that all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing before him. Number four, he learned that this God, he does his will both in heaven and also on earth. Number five, we learned that this Nebuchadnezzar said, nobody can stay him or stop his son. Number six, he also said that this God, whosoever walks in pride, that he is able to abase. And now we come to his son. And his son appeared to learn nothing. And Nebuchadnezzar had actually reached into all languages. And he had reached to all tongues, had reached to all people that dwell in all the earth. And he said to all the people in all the earth that they should understand that this God is mighty, is the most high. But how we say it? Somebody is an international evangelist, is an international preacher, international teacher, and sending the message of who God is to all the languages and all the nations. And then there's somebody very near in his house and didn't understand that. What a lesson we're learning and what danger it is for us who are globe trotty. That is, we move from nation to nation. And we move from city to city. And we move from stage to stage. And we're preaching the word of God. And we're spreading this truth of the scripture. In all nations and languages and every place. 
and may be our own child living with us does not understand the very basic condition of that word for teaching others and it's not just Nebuchadnezzar alone you think about Samuel Samuel was a great man a good man a godly man and yet we're told the two sons he had they did not know the Lord and then you think about David and then he had Solomon and Solomon, although he was reputed as the wisest man on earth, he did not live and walk in the footsteps of his father. But then, thank God, the whole picture is not all negative. We have Zechariah and Elizabeth, and we have John the Baptist, their son, the only one son that they had. And we're told that Zechariah was filled with the Spirit of God. Elizabeth filled with the Spirit of God and thank God John the Baptist filled also the Spirit of God. We're told that Zechariah was walking in righteousness, Elizabeth walking in righteousness and then we're told that even John the Baptist he lived such a righteous life. Herod feared him because he was a just man. And they were told he did many things when he heard him. And he turned the hearts of many people unto righteousness. I pray your family will be like that in Jesus' name. But now let's come to Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Belshazzar, the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine. Before the thousand, Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels with that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and the princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. And they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone. In the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the place of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw part, the part of the hand that wrote then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of the loins were loosed and his knees moved one against another the king cried aloud to bring in these astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men. But they could not reach the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was the king Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished, astonished. Here we're looking at the final day of Belshazzar on earth. We're looking at the end of his reign. We're looking at the judgment that came upon him. But first, what did he do? How did he act? How did he project himself? And what idea did he give to people all around? I've read it to you already. He had this feast. We don't know what kind of feast. Was it birthday party? Who knows? Was it a kind of remembrance of his coronation? Who knows? Was it an anniversary of something that she, you know, he just remembered? And he said, I'm going to celebrate this. It doesn't really matter why he was having the feast. The point is, he had a sensual feast. A fleshly feast. A worldly feast. 
a peace that ended up with the judgment of God coming instantaneously upon him. And then a peace that made him to understand that God in heaven rules the affairs of men. And God does not only watch what they do in a tabernacle or in a synagogue. He also watches what is done in the palace. God does not only watch what is done in Jerusalem. He also watches what is done in Babylon. He doesn't only watch what is done among the covenant people, the Jewish people. He also watches what is done among the Gentile people. Let nobody say because I'm not in Jerusalem, God is not going to look at anything I do. Because I'm not a member of the church, I'm not in Zion. Because of that, God is not going to see me. He watches everything. And He rules in the affairs of men. And whether it is Jerusalem or Babylon, or whether it is in Zion, or it is in, Assy in Syria, or whether it is in church, or in the place of work, he watches everything and immediately the hand appeared and the hand began to write upon the wall and when Belshazzar saw that were told his thoughts troubled him his conscience troubled him he knew that the judgment day had come he was not going to escape before I go I delve into Daniel chapter 5 I'm going to read to you Romans chapter 15 verse 4 Romans chapter 15 verse 4 you need to hold on to this so that you'll know the reason why we're studying this Romans chapter 15 verse 4 for whatsoever things were written aforetime they were reaching for our learning. Whatever we read today, whatever we read, study any time, they're reaching for our learning that we through patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have what? Hope. We're looking at First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now, all these things happened unto them. For examples, you know that God says, I am God, I change not. What does that mean? It means that the way he looks at things, that way has not changed. His attitude to what people do, that attitude has not changed. That I am God, I change not. This is what Belshazzar did, and this was the reaction of the Almighty God. And if anybody does today what Belshazzar did at that time, God will act the same way, because it says all these things happen unto them. For example, and they are reaching for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Actually, what we're reading about today, and what we're going to study a few weeks now in Daniel chapter 5, and back to Daniel chapter 5. In Daniel chapter 5, you'll find out that more than about 200 years before Daniel chapter 5, Isaiah had spoken about it. About 70 years before Daniel chapter 5, Jeremiah had spoken about it. If Belshazzar had just attended Bible study of Daniel, if Belshazzar had just taken the prophecy of the book of Isaiah, and he had read, and then if he kept that picture before him every time, and was looking ahead and saying, if I do this, this is what Isaiah said. Yes, I know, it's about 200 years ago he said that, but if I do this, this is what will happen if he kept that ahead of him and if he had read Jeremiah and he had said I'm keeping the book of Jeremiah in front of me every time the temptation will come that I should go this direction if I go that direction I'm keeping the book of Jeremiah before me if I do that this is what will happen what a lesson for believers today read the words of Jesus Christ and know the edge of the life of the sinner and keep that before you every time and say if i do this this is going to be the end it is by meditating it's by focusing it's by concentrating on what christ has said and he said if this happens if you walk on this broad road if you copy belshazzar 
If you follow this direction, this is where it will end. If you will keep that before you every time, you think about that, you concentrate on that, you focus on that, you meditate on that, you'll never fall in Jesus' name. And look at Isaiah chapter 13, verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the countless excellency, shall be as when God overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah. Think about that. And then look at Isaiah chapter 47. I'm skipping some verses, but I'm going to start from verse 1. It says, Come down and sit in the doors, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne. See that. See what Isaiah already said 200 years before. He said, Come down and sit on the ground because there is no throne. Thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. I will not meet thee as a man. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the lady of the kingdoms. Thou, go down some verses, it says, Thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, Not seeth me, therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which, which thou shalt not know. Thou art weary. In the multitude of thy counsels, let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things, and that shall come upon thee. None shall save thee. If Belshazzar had just read that, and he read it every day, and he said, I'll watch my way, I'll watch my path, I'll watch my steps, because this is the unchanging, unalterable, infallible word of God. And if it's going to happen to Babylon, it will not happen in my time. And for you to keep the word of God before you every time. And for you to say, here is what God has said. I will not allow the negative prophecy to come true on me. But you know, in the case of uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah also wrote about that. I'm going to pick these verses from chapter 50 of Jeremiah. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard publish and conceal not. Say, Babylon is taken. Baal is confounded. Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. And they shall set themselves in array against her. And the Chaldean shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, says the Lord. I will lay I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware. Thou was not aware. While Belshazzar was having his feast and drinking with all those lords. And with all those wives and concubines, he didn't know that the meat, that the uh, people of the meat, and the passions, they were just entering in at that time. And that's what the Lord said through Jeremiah, thou art found and thou art caught because thou was striven against the Lord. It says, the king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands wax feeble. And Guish took hold of him, and the pangs of a woman in travail, as of a woman in, in travail. Babylon is suddenly falling and destroyed. Look at this, it's very important. Je Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 11. This is very clear, very plain. It says, The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. For his device is against Babylon to destroy it. Why? Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Uh, you know, if you're reading the Bible, you'll be able to escape a lot of calamities and judgments and damnation.